Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. Today I am going to be giving you a tutorial on this flamingo that I've done using Prismacolor colored pencils. For those of you who are interested in the supplies that I typically use for colored pencil, head over and check out this video where I talk about the paint thinner and all of that pen stuff that I use. And next week I will be doing a oil over acrylic painting of basically the same drawing but in a black swan. I have new painting and drawing videos every Wednesday, so make sure you subscribe and follow me on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all that fun stuff, links down below in the video description to keep up with my newest work. I'll see you guys next week. I've started by drawing out my flamingo onto a large piece of Strathmore vellum paper. I then use masking tape to tape my work to a clipboard. Normally I like to get my backgrounds done first, but with this one I held off because I wanted to get at least a couple of layers of the lighter colored pencil onto the flamingo before I used too much black. It's way easier to darken areas as needed, but if I ended up with black where I didn't want it on accident, I can't fix that as easily. I start by layering the edges down on the face feathers. I'm using several neutral shades to build up my details. Once I have colored pencil covering the entire head and neck, I will blend it out with paint thinner and a paintbrush. You can see that the paint thinner changes the richness of the color completely. It starts off looking like crayon and ends up looking more like a light coating of watercolor in my first layer. I used to use colorless blenders for blending, but I stopped for several reasons. One is that it builds up even more of your wax bloom, making it more difficult to layer, whereas with the paint thinner, the paint thinner tends to lift off some of that wax bloom, allowing more layers to be added much easier. The second reason is that colorless blenders take forever to blend out large areas in comparison to using the paint thinner. As you can see when I blend, I don't need to be terribly careful. I just wipe the paint thinner lightly over anywhere that I want to blend. You do need to watch when blending dark colors over light. I do those areas separately to keep from mixing unwanted colors together and ending up with a muddy look. I continue to build up my head feathers, getting darker and darker. Once most of those dark areas I want are in, I go back with a white pencil to pull out some highlights and finer detail. I will go back and adjust details on the head later, but for now I'm moving on to the larger body feathers between the head and the neck. These feathers I want slightly out of focus, so I'm not going to put too much detail into them. Before I moved on to the body, I filled in the beak. I started by lightly blocking in the general dark areas and then added a few areas of white for my ridges. I blended that out with paint thinner and then I moved on to the other body feathers. These body feathers I want to keep lighter than most of the head. Just like the head, I blocked in my general colors and then I used a paintbrush with paint thinner to blend them out. The main difference here is that I want to leave lines on the feathers for detail. You need to be very careful about the direction that these lines go in. If you're not familiar with handling bird feathers in person, Google some macro photos of feathers on different types of birds. It's quite helpful to have an understanding of feathers and how they're put together. These are not solid flat planes. I like to lay my whites down first before I put in my darker colors. This prevents me from going too dark where I need whites to stand out more. I work on several feathers at a time before blending a group of them out and going back in for more details. Just like on the head, I'm starting off light and I'll go back and darken everything up later.
my feathers are blocked in, I'm going to start and work on my background. This is just a damask pattern that I use the stencil to keep uniform. I'm starting with a dark gray for the lighter portions of the pattern. I blend the gray out before I add in the black so that I don't have to be careful of blending black into the gray where I don't want it. I go back and shade darker around the edges with black to get a vignette effect where I do let the gray and the black blend some, but I want to start off with everything being clean so that I have control where my sharper areas are and my more blended areas. Now that my dark background is in, it makes it much easier for me to judge my values in the flamingo. This is where I start really layering in my darker oranges and dusky rose colors. I'm using some gray to darken up bits as well. With all of the details, I'm really forming my more frayed areas of the feathers. You can use a smaller brush when blending with the paint thinner to get even finer detail for those areas. completes this tutorial using Prismacolor colored pencils. I just picked up some Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencils last week, so I'm planning a tutorial with those as well. I'm also working on a Prismacolor versus Polychromos video, so look for that in the future.